This video is sponsored by bootcamp.com. Check it out for INBDE prep and use coupon code MENTALDENTAL for 10% off. Hey everyone, Dr. Ryan here and welcome back to our dental anatomy series. This video is about the mandibular second molar. And here we have a picture of the permanent mandibular second molar as well as its neighboring first molar. So you can compare the two and we'll focus mostly again on the differences between the second molar and the first molar that we talked about in the last video. Now using the universal tooth numbering system, this mandibular second molar includes tooth number 18 and number 31. As one fun fact that we'll start out with, this is the most symmetrical of all the molars in the mouth. Now let's get into some differences between this tooth and the first molar. So for the facial aspect, we can appreciate a couple of things. One, the tooth is just generally smaller. It's shorter. It only has two facial cusps in contrast to the three facial cusps we saw in the last tooth. And the roots are a whole lot more parallel, almost convergent. Whereas in the first molar, those roots were pretty broad and spread out from one another. Now, this is similar to what we saw in the maxillary second molar, where it was also smaller and it had more convergent roots than the maxillary first molar. So the same idea here. Like the mandibular first molar, there is a facial groove that's present and in line with the furcation. But unlike the mandibular first molar, there's only one facial groove this time. There is no distofacial groove because there is no distal cusp. This is also the tooth most likely to have a cervical enamel projection, which you can argue is actually present in this photograph where the enamel dips down into the furcation area, which has some consequences. It can make the tooth unfortunately vulnerable to the development of a periodontal pocket in that area. For the lingual aspect, there's not a whole lot to talk about here. It's basically very similar to the mandibular first molar. The lingual cusps are sharper and taller. The lingual groove is very short and also in line with the furcation. The root trunk is longer on the lingual than it was on the facial surface. That's the same thing that we saw on the first molar. Now, the only thing that I'll say is different is the root trunk overall is a bit longer on this tooth than it was on the first molar. From the mesial aspect, this rhombus shape that we've been talking about for all the mandibular posterior teeth is perhaps most evident in this tooth. There's this really obvious skew going on here. And in the mouth, the whole tooth, not only the crown portion, but this whole entire tooth leans very heavily in a lingual direction. And that's part of what's called the curve of Wilson, which is an imaginary line if we were to imagine the occlusal surfaces from a frontal view of the posterior teeth forming a sort of U-shape as you connect all the cusp tips together. So imagine the mandibular posterior teeth on both the right and the left leaning in towards the tongue. That's actually a pretty natural curve to see in a proper occlusion. Once I erase the lines here, we can appreciate the heights of contour. The facial one is very close to the cervical line, so we'll definitely say it's in the cervical third of this tooth, whereas the lingual height of contour is just about in the middle of the crown. Again, proof of the rhomboid skew of this tooth. This mesiofacial cusp tip that we can see here is almost perfectly in line with the root apex, again, thanks to the skew. For the distal aspect, there are all the same things that you're used to seeing, the shorter marginal ridge, the flatter cervical line. And again, like we saw in the first molar, the distal root is a bit narrower than the mesial root. So you can see parts of that mesial root sticking out there from behind the narrower distal root. One slight difference here is that the roots taper a lot more drastically than they did in the mandibular first molar. That tapering wasn't quite this intense. 
Okay, so for the occlusal aspect, a couple things I want to point out. One, the general shape can be described as a rectangle as opposed to a pentagon because we have four cusp tips that form this sort of box. However, there's one part I want to point out, this mesiofacial cervical bulge. This is much more noticeable now as opposed to in the first molar. So this tooth has a very prominent mesiofacial cervical prominence or cervical bulge, whatever you want to call it. And although I said this is the most symmetrical molar in the mouth, this mesiofacial cervical bulge is your key for trying to recognize if this is a right or a left mandibular second molar. So in this case, since the mesial surface we know is on the right side, we know that this tooth is number 18, not number 31. Number 31 would look like a mirror image of this with the mesiofacial cervical bulge over on the left side. Otherwise, the mesial surface is generally a bit more squared. The distal surface is a bit more rounded or convex. The mesial half of the tooth is slightly wider than the distal half, again, thanks to that cervical bulge. And I like to think of this tooth as the plus four. So if you remember the first molar, the mandibular first molar, I talked about as being Y5. That's because it has Y-shaped grooves and five cusps. The second molar is plus four because it has plus-shaped grooves and four cusps. So the grooves here are the facial groove, the lingual groove, and then the central groove. So nice and easy, nice and simple. There's also just three pits to worry about, distal pit, central pit, and mesial pit, right across the center of the tooth. For the pulp chamber and the pulp canals, we have four pulp horns. We should expect that because there are four cusp tips. And then 55% of the time, they have three canals, and 45% of the time, they have four canals. So it's kind of similar to the mandibular first molar. There's almost always two canals in that mesial root, and then sometimes two canals in each of the roots. For the cross section of the tooth, it's very similar to the mandibular first molar in that it's a rectangular shape. Again, a little bit more thickness on the mesial side of the tooth, but here is your cross section of the tooth at the CEJ with your pulp chamber here in gray. And then imagine the mesial root, if we did a cross section at the middle of it, would be another ribbon shape. The cross section of the distal root at its middle would be an oval. Same thing that we saw with the mandibular first molar, nothing really different to talk about here. And then for a summary of this tooth, the mesiodistal dimension greater than facial lingual, which is greater than the occluso cervical dimension. Of course, that's for the crown. We can think of it as the plus four tooth, plus shaped grooves, four cusps in order from biggest to smallest. We have mesiofacial, then mesiolingual, then distolingual, then distofacial. So quick way to kind of remember that if we went back to our occlusal surface here, all you have to do to remember the order is start with, of course, the biggest one is going to be the one with that mesiofacial cervical bulge, and we just go clockwise. So mesiofacial, then mesiolingual, then distolingual, then distofacial. That's the order from biggest to smallest. Same order as the mandibular first molar. The only thing we're missing here is that fifth distal cusp. Makes sense. Then we have three grooves instead of the usual four. So we only have the facial groove, lingual groove, and central groove, and then the three pits that we're accustomed to seeing, mesial, central, distal. The crown looks like a trapezoid from the facial, as do all of the molars. Looks like a rhombus from the side view, as do all of the mandibular posterior teeth. Has a rectangular occlusal view and rectangle cross-section at the CEJ, and it primarily consists of four developmental lobes, four pulp horns, and then either three or four pulp canals. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. 
please like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to this channel for much more on dentistry. If you'd like to support me, please check out my Patreon page. And thank you to all of my patrons for their support. You can unlock access to my video slides to take notes on and practice questions for the board exams. So go check that out. The link is in the description. Thanks again for watching everyone. I'll see you in the next video.